Hi everyone and welcome to your first IGCSE video. Today we're going to talk about three things. First we're going to talk about units very briefly because we already kind of mentioned them the other day. Then we're going to talk about this other thing called conversion factors that tells us how to change between units. And this is going to take a while and it's going to be a little hard to understand, but we'll get there. And finally we'll talk about something called standard form, which is the way that scientists, especially physicists, uh, write their numbers. And the reason we use this is because it makes life a lot easier for us, and you'll see why in a while. So first let's talk about units. Now remember that, for example, when we have a box, there's many ways we can measure it, right? We could, for example, measure it in arms. So I can see this is one arm. That's that's a, a, an arm of a person that only has two fingers. Um, yeah. And I can measure this thing in arms and I can say, well, one, two, and let's say and a half arms, right? But this is not very practical because then, you know, people have different arms. So it would be very, very hard to communicate to other people how long this table is. So what most civilized countries have done, except for the US, is to agree on a set of units of measures that they're going to use to tell the length, for example, of a table. And of course, you know that this is the meter. And so when we measure length, we use a meter. And a meter has been de was defined actually according to the diam well, not really the diameter, but the perimeter of the of the earth. But but you don't really need to know that. Just think of as the meter as this metal bar that's in Paris and every other meter has to have exactly the same length as the metal bar and then when somebody says one meter then everybody knows that that's one meter and we're all happy and we understand each other okay so that's that's for length and of course we measure other stuff right so we measure things like time so you know we measure things like the time that goes by when a pendulum oscillates or the time that goes by while I, I cook my food. And again, we could measure time in many different ways. There's, you know, sand clocks, there's water clocks, there's all kinds of stuff. But we use the second. And this is the SI unit for time. So the standard unit that everybody uses for time is called the second. And we call this the SI unit and I think I told you this the other day, but just in case I forgot to say that, this stands for, and I know it's inverted, but that's because the French. So, because this stands for international, so international system. That is, it's the system that everybody uses. We all use seconds, we all use meters. And we all use, and this may sound like a surprise, but you would think that to weigh things, so here's a box and I and I put it in this in this scale and I want to weigh it. And which one would you say the international unit for weight is? Is it the gram or is it the kilogram? And you know, intuitively it should be the gram, but it, the gram is way too little. So instead we use the kilogram. So the international unit for weight is a kilogram. So with these three units, just the second, the kilogram, and the meter, we can make every other unit that we will see that during this course, except for when we get into electricity. So with three units, we can then talk about energy, momentum, uh, work, power. All these really refined physical concepts are nothing but a combination of units of time, mass, and length. Now, the meter, the second, and the kilogram, even though they're very useful, sometimes are not extremely useful. So, for example, if I want to measure the distance from here to the moon, and I do it in meters, I'm going to get a lot of meters. So maybe doing it in meters is not a great idea. So for that, what we use is something called unit prefixes, which change our units somehow. So, for example, we can measure things in kilometers. And a kilometer is nothing but 1,000 meters. So, well, you guys should know that already. But, for example, the distance between Munich and Augsburg is 40 kilometers, which means it's 4,000 meters. 
And there's actually many different prefixes that we can use to make our units bigger or smaller. Now, this thing that you see here is called um, standard form, and we will talk about this briefly. But so for the moment, just focus on this. So for example, when I want to multiply my unit by 10, I put a deca before, so decameters. Nobody really uses decameters at all, but you know, you can do it. Or you can say a yeah, decasecond, and that's 10 seconds. Why anyone would want to talk about things in multiples of 10 seconds is beyond me. But again, you could say that. The ones that are mostly used, of course, are kilo, mega, and giga. We're not going to go anywhere further. So a kilometer is a million, sorry, a thousand meters. A kilosecond would be a thousand seconds. But again, we don't really use that because we use minutes and hours. And a kilogram is, of course, a thousand gram. So in this case, the kilogram, remember that that's already our unit. And then a gram is just one thousandth of a kilogram. Okay, then you have a mega, which is one million, giga, which is one billion. And then on the other side, and this is a little bit more used, you have deci, so a decimeter is one tenth of a meter, a centimeter is one hundredth of a meter, a millimeter, one thousand, and then you have micro, which is one millionth, and nano, which is even less, one billionth. We're not going to use pico. Now, I know it's only vaguely related, but since we're introducing the decimeter, I would like to talk about a unit called the liter, which you surely know, and it's a unit of volume. And actually the liter is not a unit of the international system, but it's very, very common, and we need to know how it works. So the idea is one liter is a unit of volume. And a volume basically is just like, how much stuff can I put somewhere? How much space does it take, right? And in order to measure volumes, well, we take a little box and then we figure out what its volume is. And to do that, we just multiply one side times one side times the other side, and we get a volume, which is usually in meters cubed. But a meter cubed is huge. You would never put a meter cube of milk in your fridge. You would have a lot of milk. So normally we measure things in liters. And a liter is just this same box, but instead of taking sides of one meter cubed, we take sides of one decimeter cubed, or 0 0.1 meters cubed. So 0 0.1 meters, 0 0.1 meters, and then 0 0.1 meters. And then the volume that you get for this is one liter, is 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. That's 0 0.0, oops, 0, 1 meters cubed. So a liter is really a thousandth of a meter cubed. And this is a little interesting because if you look at this, each side is just one tenth of a meter. But the thing is, since I'm multiplying these three things, so it's one tenth times one tenth times one tenth, finally what I get is something that's one thousandth of a meter cubed. And this always happens when we talk about volumes. And we will see this later on. Okay, now the real fun begins. And this is where a lot of people get confused. So if you need to watch this several times and practice this while I'm doing it, please go ahead and do it because otherwise you're gonna struggle with this. The idea is very simple, but then when you make it a little bit more complex, things get out of hand. So the idea is that I have, let's say 10 kilometers, and I want to have this in meters. So I want to turn 10 kilometers to meters. And of course, what everybody would do is like, well, 10 kilometers, each kilometer is 1,000 meters, so 10,000 meters, done. And this, in general, works very well. But it doesn't work so well when you have things like 34 centimeters cubed, or when you have things like 12 kilometers per hour. Then people are like, oh, wait, how do you transform? centimeters cubed. Do you divide by 100? Well, not really because this is cubed. Uh, how about this? And people get very, very, very confused. So there's actually a systematic way that you, can, that you can use to transform from one unit to the other that always works. It's very simple. And I know that it looks like I'm making things more complicated than they are. But believe me, once you reach certain 
heights in the IB and you do, for example, chemistry, this thing that I'm going to teach you is going to come, up, come in very, very handy. And the idea is that all I do is multiply by 1, okay? So imagine I have 10, 10 kilometers, okay? Now I have 10 kilometers and I want to have this in meters. So I multiply this by 1. So I times this by this. And this is called a factor because it's a division. I'm going to divide two things. I'm going to divide two things that are the same and therefore I'm going to multiply by 1. Now you need to remember that a kilometer is a quantity. It's just a length. So this is really a multiplication. It's 10 times this quantity called a kilometer. And now what I'm going to do is like, well, if this is being multiplied, I can get rid of it by dividing by it. So I can put, for example, one kilometer here, and then I will be able to cross out kilometer and kilometer. And that makes me happy because then I don't have any kilometers anymore. And I want this in meter, right? So, so I'm like, okay, so one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. So I put thousand meters here. And now this is equal to this, and therefore I'm multiplying by 1. I'm not changing the, this quantity, I'm just changing how I express it. I don't have any kilometers anymore, I only have meters here. And now all I need to do is multiply everything on top, so 10 times 1,000 times a meter, so 10,000 meters, 10,000 meters, and then divide it by everything under, so divide it by 1. So that's it, 10,000 meters, I'm done. And I know that it looks like I overcomplicated things, but you'll see why this is useful when I try to do this one. Okay, so imagine now that I want to transform centimeters cubed to um, meters cubed. So I have 34 centimeters cubed, and centimeters cubed are really centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, because that's the definition of a cube. So I have 34 centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. And I want to know how much that is in meters. And I do the same thing. I use a conversion factor. So first, I'm going to get rid of one centimeter. So I'm going to put centimeters here. And I want to convert to meters. And the condition is that this thing has to be equal to one. So whatever's under here has to be equal to what's up here. And you guys know that in one meter this a hundred centimeters and if you don't know that then you should revise that so we have that one meter is 100 centimeters and as you can see again this is equal to this so I'm only multiplying by one and this thing goes and this thing goes because remember this is 34 times one centimeter to one centimeter times one centimeter and this is a hundred times one centimeter so these things cross out but I'm still not done because I still have two more centimeters to get rid of so I have to do this thing again. Or if I was really clever, I could just put a parenthesis, a bracket here, and then say cube. But I'm not going to do that, because I'm going to do things slowly so that everybody can follow. So now I say 100 centimeters, 1 meter, and that allows me to get rid of the second centimeter. And then I do this again. And, and now, I can finally get rid of all the centimeters, and then I'm going to get meters cubed, because it's meter times meter times meter. So now let's calculate this, and again, I multiply everything that's on top, and then divide by everything that's under. So on top is just 34 times 1 times 1 times 1, that's 34, and then times meter times meter times meter, that's meter cubed. So I have 34 meter cubed divided by... 100 times 100 times 100. So that's a lot. So that's uh, 1 million, right? So divided by 1 and then 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3. And then, of course, I could go ahead and divide these two things together. And remember that what I do when I divide by this is I run the comma 6 times. So what I do is, let me just write here the 34, and then I run the comma once, divide by 10, divide by 100, divide by 1,000, divide by 10,000, divide by 100,000, divide by a million, and then I'm done. So I've run the comma 
one, two, three, four, five, six times. And, of course, meters cubed. So now I know that 34 centimeters cubed are 0 0.000034 meters cubed. And that's how I can deduce this. Now, I could do the same for kilometers per hour. Um, and actually, yeah, I will. So let's try that for kilometers per hour. And th but the idea is very, very similar. So again, I have 12 kilometers per hour. And the hour is dividing, right? So now first I, I'm going to get rid of the kilometers. So I have one kilometer here is equal to 1,000 meters. And then I can get rid of the kilometer. And I'm pretty happy. But now I still need to get rid of the hour. And since the hour is dividing, then I need to put the hour multiplying so I can cross things out. So I put one hour here. And let's say that I want this in seconds. Okay, so how many seconds in an hour? Well, that's 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, so 60 times 60, 3,600. So 3,600 seconds. And then, and I'm not going to do this, what you would do is just multiply this times this. So you'd have 12,000 meters. Remember that the hour is gone. And then you would divide by 3,600 seconds. And then that would give you, uh, I think it's 3. Right? No, it wouldn't give you 3, sorry. Um, it would give you around 3 meters per second. If you want to do it in your calculator, just go ahead and do it. Anyway, the main point here is when I want to convert a certain quantity, I add conversion factors. Conversion factors are things that multiply things by 1. Whatever's on top has to be equal to whatever's at the bottom. And the unit, so if the unit is at the bottom, I need it on top. If the unit is on top, then I need it at the bottom because I want to be able to cross them out. And when I multiply everything on top and then divide by everything under, I will get the right transformation. Now, I don't know if you've realized, but converting from unit to unit, we've gotten a lot of numbers like this, 0 0.0000034. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate operating with these kind of things because then you need to start counting zeros and it's a pain. It's impossible to keep track of those zeros. Same thing here, right? So what if I told you that you can actually do this multiplication in a much shorter time without having to count zeros? You can using this thing called standard form. And the idea is that instead of expressing things like this, we express them as powers of 10. So let me show you what I mean. So imagine that I have 2,000. Now 2,000 is really nothing but 2 times 1,000. And 1,000 is nothing but 10 to the power of 3, because it's 10 times 10 times 10, 1,000. So I can express this as 2 times 10 to the power of 3. Well, this kind of notation is called standard form. And the idea is that you should always have a no one number before the comma and then times 10 to the 3. So let me just give you, an, you know, a number of examples of things that are in standard form. You would have something like um, 2.34 times 10 to the 15, standard form. Uh, 1.3 times 10 to the minus 12. And remember, 10 to the minus 12 means divided by 10 to the 12. So this is also standard form. One number here, point, something, and then that. Now, for example, how about this? Is 34 times 10 to the 14 standard form? Pause the video and tell me. Well, hopefully you saw that no, it's not standard form, because in standard form, you only get to have one number before the comma. So if you want to express this in standard form, you really have to say 3 Point 0.4 times 10 to the 15. So the idea is that you always need to have one number before the comma times 10 to the something. And that's called standard form. And let me show you why that's useful. So let's take a look at this, this multiplication over there. I'm, I'm going to write it down again because you can barely see. And we're going to do that using standard form. So I have 0 0.0000034 times 2000000 equals 1. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I transform to standard form, and I realize that this is the same thing 
uh, how much would I have to multiply these things to get 3.4? Well, I would have to multiply it by 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million. Or, better, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I would have to multiply this thing by 10 to the 6 to get 3.4. Therefore, this is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 6. Why? Because if I multiply 10 to the minus 6 times 10.6, I get 1, and then I get 3.4. So this number here is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 6. It's 3.4 divided by 1 million, which is what we just saw. Now, this number here. Well, this number here is 2 million, which is 2 times 1 million, and 1 million is 10 to the 6, because it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. So this is 2 times 10 to the 6. Cool! And now how do we multiply this? Very easy. We just multiply this part times this part, and that will give us a number. So in this case, 6.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 6 plus 10 to the 6. And all we need to do, remember, when we multiply 10 to the something, when we multiply exponents, all we need to do is add up the exponents, which is super easy to do, right? Minus 6 plus 6, that's 0. So 10 to the 0, that's 1. So 6.8, done. Ta-da! So that's why this is so useful. Other things also become really useful. So for example, when you have, um, I don't know, 0 0.001 cubed, oof, that looks cumbersome. But if you have something like 1, so then again, 1, 2, 3. So 1 times 10 to the minus 3 cubed, you can easily see and remember when in when there's an exponent of an exponent, these things get multiplied, so then you can easily see that that's 1 times 10 to the minus 9. So the idea is that doing this saves us a lot of time, because all we need to do is add up exponents, and then we're done. We can forget about it. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Now, after this video, this is what you should know how to do. You should know the international system units, you should know the prefixes, so mega, kilo, micro, milli and all that stuff. You should know how to use conversion factors, so you should know how to turn from millimeters to kilometers, and you should also know how to turn from centimeters cubed to meters cubed, things like that. And finally, you should be able to use standard form, so you should be able to turn a number that's just a bunch of zeros into something resembling 2.5 times 10 to the 15, or something like that. If you can do all this, then you're all set for the next day's lesson. Good luck.